Uh, hello, everyone. I am John Stevenson, CEO of Live 365 and Media Creek. Uh, Media Creek is the holdings company of both Live 365 and Empire Streaming. Uh, I first want to send a shout out to Samuel and Roman for putting this together, and also a shout out to uh, Lucas from our team for helping to put together uh, a lot of the information that we're going to be going through. So. What I'm not going to be doing today is I'm not going to be doing a hard pitch on Live 365 or showing a uh, full end-to-end -end demo, but going a little more from a high level into some of the technical aspects uh, of our platform, just in the essence of time. Uh, if you don't do want a demo, uh, we do have a free seven-day trial, or feel free to reach out directly to me, and I can absolutely put you in touch with someone from our team to walk through, or if you have any questions specifically about the platform, um, more than happy to do that. So. My contact information uh, will be available at the end. All right. There we go. Uh, okay, cool. So a quick agenda on what we're gonna be doing, uh, a quick history on Live 365, uh, what Live 365 offers, um, and then trying to tie it a little more into Liquid Soap with how and why we use Liquid Soap, uh, and then also some of the challenges, at least from a high level, um, that we've gone through. So I will quick start it off with a high, level overview of Live 365. So Live 365, uh, a quick brief history on it. The platform launched in 1999. So being one of the first, uh, there really wasn't anything available out there, at least from like an open source perspective. So the engineering team at that time um, had to basically write everything from scratch. Uh, and that's where a product called Nanocaster was born, which was basically uh, an IC streaming server. And it allowed some basic functionality that um, like what SOAP offers just in a very minimalist, minimalist way. Uh, a lot of the code was written in C and Perl, uh, and we'll get into ultimately why we um, are using Liquid Soap today uh, and kind of scrap that. So at its peak, uh, Live 365 had more than 50,000 concurrent radio streams. Uh, this was when the platform was actually free, so you didn't have to pay a monthly fee. Uh, and at that time, um, Live 365 was also burning through millions of dollars in VC funding. Um, ultimately, the Live365.com platform uh, that started in 99 actually went bankrupt um, in January of 2016 for a number of different reasons. Um, one of them was directly related to uh, a lot of the technical debt that they had and engineering leadership and all of that. And it was kind of hard for the company at that time to kind of re-engineer everything. And it was a little bit too much to bite off um, and whatnot. So. That op opened up an opportunity for our company. So Media Creek uh, acquired the assets of Live 365 that same year. And part of the assets actually included all of the source code and original Nanocaster software and all of that. Um, and for context, uh, a little bit on who we are as well today. Um, so Media Creek is the audio focused holdings company um, that is behind Empire Streaming, which is a enterprise level audio content delivery network. Um, and then it's also the holdings company of Live 365 uh, as a team. The whole entire Media Creek group is uh, 36 team members worldwide. So kicking off this uh, presentation, more focused on Liquid Soap and Live 365. So what does Live 365 offer from a platform standpoint? So we offer the ability for users to create a 24-7 radio station uh, with everything that a webcaster needs, um, including the basic playback functionality, uh, analytics uh, players, which the screenshot that is embedded there is a plug for uh, our new players that are going to be coming out in the next two and a half weeks. Um, one of our big differentiators is uh, music licensing. So as a platform, uh, with every package that we have on Live 365, we offer music uh, licensing coverage in the US, UK, and Canada. Uh, and not only are we a broadcast platform on Live 365, but we are also a home for listeners to discover thousands of different independent uh, internet radio stations and really kind of catering towards um, that long tail. So we're not trying to be you know, competing for the ears of Spotify and Pandora, which is playing a lot more mainstream content, um, but really focused on kind of the community aspect and more of that you know, long tail um, listenership and content. So from a platform standpoint, uh, as it directly relates to, oh, did I zoom in? There we go. Uh, as it relates to uh, Liquid Soap, um, so users are able to upload their content to our servers. Uh, they are able to create playlists using a number of different tools that we have directly in the Live 365 dashboard. Uh, they are able to uh, create clock wheels, which are like radio rotations, um, and also schedule either single or recurring playlists, um, kind of very similar to some of the other projects uh, that people have showcased 
um, but basically like a Google Calendar where you can create um, you know, all kind of different customization with your 24-7 your clock for the radio station. So getting into some of the fun stuff. Um, how and why we use liquid soap. So a little bit of history. Uh, as I mentioned, Live 365 originally developed a proprietary streaming software called Nanocaster. Um, it was a really interesting kind of dilemma that we had when we were looking to relaunch the platform uh, after it went bankrupt. So it was kind of a question of, do we try to re put everything back together? Um, which again, a lot of it was written in C and Perl uh, and using stuff like enterprise databases like from Oracle. Uh, a little bit over our head and we didn't really want to try to find engineers that um, could help us do all of that. So we actually stumbled upon Liquid Soap, um, which definitely shows the power. Uh, we were able to launch a minimum viable product of the original Live 365 broadcaster uh, in less than three months. And a very big testament to that was uh, leveraging the powerful tools of uh, Liquid Soap. So how we use Liquid Soap today, um, Liquid Soap is used to play very dynamic playlists controlled by the Live 365 users. Uh, so automatically generating playlists based on different parameters that a broadcaster configures, uh, scheduling static playlists, which are created by users, uh, and then also the incorporation of jingles and advertisements, um, all based on the user's preferences. Uh, in terms of scale, um, we are handling over 3,000 plus concurrent users or 3,000 plus Liquid Soap instances at any given time. Uh, Liquid Soap is also used for transcoding live streams. Um, so one of the big use cases, especially uh, I know with the Radio France um, presentation, some of the discussion was adap about adaptive bitrate. Um, we're actually starting to use that within our infrastructure, particularly on the Empire side, where a uh, radio station will send us a high quality bitrate and we'll transcode it to a number of different smaller bit rates. We could take advantage of um, adaptive bitrate, um, based basically to improve the user experience on the listener end. Um, we're working on eventually rolling that out to the Live 365 platform as well in the future. Uh, also with Liquid Soap, uh, we offer dynamic crossfading between tracks, which is configured by users, uh, automatic audio normalization, and then um, as a presentation right before me, uh, we also had FM, FFmpeg integrated for basically offering different codec support. Uh, and trying to harness a lot of the powerful tools that FFmpeg um, has alongside with it. So how do we control Liquid Soap? Um, it is a relatively simple Liquid Soap script that we have uh, with a few cues and interactive variables. Uh, we are micromanaging the playback from a Python application, uh, which is communicating with Liquid Soap over Unix sockets. Um, and separate application that we have for dynamically starting the new Liquid Soap instances on assigned servers. So, as a new user comes into the platform uh, and signs up for a radio station, you're automatically assigned with uh, one of the servers in our Liquid Soap pool. Um, and that all happens through um, a separate application. Um, so what happens to the audio stream from Liquid Soap? Uh, so the audio stream from Liquid Soap gets pushed to a local IceCast server uh, that we have running um, on the same physical server that Liquid Soap is running. Uh, from there, it basically gets pulled to our audio CDN platform, um, and the audio CDN edge service servers then distribute the stream to listeners. Uh, one thing that we did find that was um, at least graceful in terms of not dropping users was actually having this local IceCast uh, instance on the Liquid Soap server. Um, and what we actually have encoded in there is uh, like a silent fallback. So in the event that um, a stream does drop or there's no content, um, we're actually just streaming silence for, for the user temporarily until they're able to either push uh, a live source or um, uh, one of their playlists that they have created. All right. Um, and some challenges that we have with Liquid Soap. Um, now we'll get into uh, a little bit of that. So. Documentation uh, was one thing that we did find as a challenge. So while there is a lot of documentation readily available um, for most of the non-trivial cases, uh, we did find that you either have to be very familiar with Liquid Soap uh, or find some examples to implement something similar. A lot of it was definitely trial and error, um, but you know, as we went through it, uh, we actually things definitely made a lot of sense. Um, and we kind of started working on some of our own documentation internally just to help with certain edge cases. Uh, we did find that um, sometimes in our older infrastructure that lockups um, and stuck liquid soap instances would happen. So we don't really have this problem anymore um, after switching to only queues, but um, it definitely was an issue that 
as we started to scale, um, we started noticing liquid soap instances uh, locking up consistently. Um, micromanagement of the playback is hard. So when a liquid soap uh, starts playing a new track, the queue is returned by the server. Uh, it's either missing or has tracks sometimes in the wrong order. Um, we need to make sure that we can detect such a state and wait until things settle. Um, and then queues need to be connected to source for skip command to work. So that's also one issue that uh, we've had and we're trying to kind of work around within our infrastructure. Um, and then an important thing to note here, uh, as some of the showcasing with Liquid Soap 2.0, uh, most of the queue functionality will be changed. So it's gonna be something that's gonna be really beneficial to, uh, to us at Live 365. Um, and then another issue that we have seen um, is that while it's not super extensive, we definitely see memory usage uh, growing um, and we sometimes need to consistently uh, schedule like restarts every couple of months for, for certain instances, which only causes a couple of seconds of downtime for, for stations. So uh, that is actually it. So I kind of, I guess, caught us up on the, uh, the presentation. Um, Let's see, are there any questions? Uh, looks yeah. like it's been Thank care. you very much. So, so yeah, <laughs> I, I guess there were some questions. Uh, I had a question about the Python uh, micromanaging uh, application. Um, I asked, <laughs> is it open source? <laughs> and I've got another question on that subject. <laughs> Uh, so is it open source? Um, no, it's not open source, at least at this point. Um, yeah, if you do have any specific questions about it, I mean, we'd be happy to chat about it and you could definitely send me an email. Um, that is definitely something that uh, as a company, we would like to uh, start contributing more to. It's just the open source community. Um, it's just, we've been super heads down and very focused on um, growing our user base and uh, dealing with some of the challenges that um, we've had just from an infrastructure standpoint. But now that all of that's kind of behind us, um, I do expect uh, as a company that we'll be contributing and um, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, there's something in the future that um, we'll be able to, to release on that. Well, that, that was kind of my <laughs> second question. Like, given the success of Light 365, uh, <clears throat> we will see some more contributions because all the problems you have, and I'm going to mention it a little bit later, are problems that a lot of users have, and it could be good to actually improve and uh, give back to Liquid Sub for that. <laughs> yep. No, I would absolutely agree. And um, yeah, I, that's something that I would like to do more as a company is definitely contributing and more. Uh, discussions and all of that kind of stuff. Um, I think even for the the non-technical guys in the room, aka me, um, it's still really cool to um, meet people and you know see some of the similar challenges. And since we're all kind of working towards uh, the same goal, um, you know why not or why why not try to solve it together versus each trying to solve the same problem. So um, yeah, I think this is definitely a good start with uh, the first liquid shop um, and getting a lot of people um, networking and that kind of stuff and expect to see a lot more from there. OK, cool. thank you. So we would be, we'd be glad to accept any pull request or, or whatever you, <laughs> you'd have. So I, I think uh, Sherry has a, has a question, or she wanted to ask a question, if anyone wants to also. Yeah. No, we we can't hear you. So do you have the? Uh, no, you have to enable the mic at the bottom. Oh yeah, you can just type. And yeah, thank you, John, for your. Oh yeah, here she is. <laughs> so we can see you, but we can't hear you, which is. Um... <laughs> Who does the best tech support at Live 365? Um, I don't know if I could answer that. I can't really play favorites, unfortunately. You do a really awesome job, though, Sherry. Um, I don't. Since this is being recorded, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna have a bias. To say you do a really <laughs> excellent job, and I do admire uh, all of your contributions each day. So, I know some of our customers uh, can be kind of aggressive, but um, I have a lot of uh, respect for you and everybody else on the, the support team. <laughs> And, and John, I wanted to thank you uh, because uh, there's a lot of company that are maybe, maybe your competitors in Europe or in France, actually, and uh, none of them are actually uh, telling out loud, we are using Liquid Soap, and they are, it's obvious, because, well, 
we know how it works, we know how it is, and they, they have to. And then thanks for speaking up and actually going there. I think it's a good step. <laughs> Step in the right direction, uh, and you'll definitely be seeing a lot more from from our company in terms of uh, the community, um, in terms of open source, and particularly related to liquid soap uh, in the future. So, appreciate everybody's time. Um, if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, it's John at live365.com. Uh, it is J O N, or I'm also on the uh, liquid soap Slack. So, if you want to just send me a private message. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Thank you very much.